<laughs> it's not funny. Wait, I didn't mean to laugh because it's not funny, but it's kind of funny in my mind. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Jordan Terrell, and I am here with the first episode of Can We Talk right here on JTTV. Before we jump off into the video, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. Follow me and the YouTube page on Instagram and Twitter. Let's get off into these good hot topics. So first things first, we're gonna give flowers to Naya Rivera and Congressman John Lewis, who both passed away this week. Naya was 33 years old. John Lewis was 80 years old. Naya, you'll know for her starring role in Glee, although she's been acting for years. Uh, a lot of us will remember her as a child actor from things such as Family Matters. Um, she unfortunately drowned on a lake trip while saving her son. Or at least that's the story that's we've, that we've been told. She and her son went on a lake trip Apparently they decided to go swimming and according to sources close to the investigation, she had enough strength to put him back on the boat and save him, but unfortunately could not save herself. It's uh, eerily reminiscent to the death of Shad Gaspard, a professional wrestler who died a couple of months ago in the same way he and his son were swimming in the ocean and uh, if I remember correctly, the current actually took them under. And when people came to rescue them, he told them, save his son first. And they obviously saved his son, unfortunately could not save him. Extremely tragic death. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to her family, her friends, her loved ones, her Glee cast, all her fans, everybody who loved Naya Rivera. And of course, Rest in peace to Congressman John Lewis, a civil rights titan, icon, um, most known for his work with civil rights, directly working with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A lot of us would not be where we are without John Lewis and without the men and women like him. So rest in peace to John Lewis as well. Ciao. So Brashear Gray, actor Brashear Gray, we all know him as Hakeem Lyon from the hit Fox TV show Empire, was arrested this past week for allegedly beating his wife for hours. The story as I read it was that his wife got away from him, ran to a friend, they found somewhere to call the police. It was about 1030 at night and the police went to his home in order to arrest him. And then there was a standoff until like seven in the morning. I don't want to attribute this to Brashear Gray because I don't know what that young brother's going through. But unfortunately, we see this a lot in Hollywood where young stars who have their stars shining bright real fast and real hard tend to crash out when things end. And as we all know, Empire was canceled somewhat unceremoniously due to the Jesse Smollett situation. So I'm sure that Brashear was depending on Empire, so to speak, even though I don't think he should have been. And I hope that he wasn't because he was doing other stuff. He did the new edition film for BET. He did a couple of other movies. And if I'm not mistaken, he is an actual rapper. He's, he's a performer. So he had that to fall back on. I really hope this is not the case of a young black man in Hollywood spiraling out of control because his biggest money grab is no longer there. I hope that whoever is around this young man, I say young like he's not just a few months younger than me, but I hope whoever is around him can sit him down and get him together and get him back on the right path because he is an extremely talented young man and I do not want to see his career falter because he's making so many mistakes. Nick Cannon. So as we all know, Nick Cannon was fired from Viacom CBS for statements that he made on his uh, podcast, Cannon's Class, when he had hip hop pioneer and very controversial person, Professor Griff, on his podcast. I'm not going to repeat what was said because JTTV is a place of inclusion. I don't want anybody to feel uh, excluded on this channel and I certainly do not want to repeat the hateful speech of anybody 
unfortunately, Nick, you, you've been in this game long enough to know you can't play certain games with people. And I understand from a hip hop standpoint why you would want Professor Griff on your platform, why you would want to talk to him. And Professor Griff is more than welcome to his own opinions about everything in life. He can feel however he wants to feel. But I think that Nick Cannon has been in this game long enough and he should have had the wherewithal to know that although in the moment he felt like he was just speaking his mind and speaking his truth, he should have known that that was going to come back to bite him. You don't play with these white folks money, Nick. You should know that. And then it's it, now it's become a long drawn out thing. He's now demanding that Viacom CBS not only apologize to him, but give him full ownership of Wild and Out, which I think that they should. If you're going to cut ties with Nick Cannon, that's perfectly fine. But if he is the creator of Wild and Out, which we all know him to be, then give him ownership of Wild and Out. Let him go off and do whatever he wants to do with Wild and Out. If you're going to cut ties, cut ties. So, and, and Nick has since come out and apologized. He's actually keeping his position as host of The Mass Singer on Fox. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how all this continues to play out if Viacom CBS will hire him back once the storm is over, so to speak, or are they completely done with him? So Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion. Whew. A mess is a mess is a mess. As the story is alleged, Megan and Tori got into an argument in the back of an SUV when Megan went to leave the SUV or run out of the SUV, Tori actually shot her in the foot. He got charged, I uh, believe, with um, just a firearm charge. And then after the investigation, it says here on the shade room that they have actually upgraded it to assault with a deadly weapon. Nothing has come out as far as what the argument was about. I'm trying to, I, I've been trying to decipher, are Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion, like, are they a thing? Did I miss that? Is that a piece of trivia that I missed somewhere? Were they, are they dating? Were they dating? Why, why were they together? It was just news to me that they were even together. Of course, the internet did what the internet did. 50 Cent did what 50 Cent did. Megan Thee Stallion has since come out with a tweet that I'm also reading from The Shade Room, and it says, Black women are so unprotected, and we hold so many things in to protect the feelings of others without considering our own. It might be funny to y'all on the internet and just another messy topic for you to talk about, but this is my real life, and I'm real life hurt and traumatized. I fully see where she's coming from. It seems like black women can't go through anything without being the butt of the joke. And with something like this, everyone's joking, everyone's comparing her to Ricky and Boys in the Hood and things like that, which is the meme that 50 Cent posted up. But I could see how she's real life traumatized. Of course, somebody shot her. And of course, if the situation is as it has been portrayed where they were in an argument and she tried to leave and he shot her from leaving. How many times have we heard about women, more specifically black women, being killed trying to leave an abuser? It's not funny. It's, it's not a thing to joke about. Like she said, yes, yeah, funny on the internet. Ha, ha, ha. Everybody on the internet has something to say and has something to do. But for her, this is her real life. And of course, she's going to be real life traumatized. She got shot when trying to leave an allegedly abusive situation. I'm not saying that her and Tori are together. That's not my tea. I don't know that tea. Nobody served that up to me. But what I'm saying is when you're in a situation with anybody and you try to leave and they shoot you, in response to you trying to leave, that would be traumatizing for anybody. So to everybody out there, especially black men, we have to do a better job of protecting black women and understanding black women and listening to them when they tell us they are hurting, they are traumatized or anything else. We have to do a better job at listening to black women. Meg, 
I'm praying for you. I don't know what the situation was, is, or will be, but sistering, I'm praying for you. That's about all I can say. So moving on to Evelyn Lozada and Chad Ochocinco, let me just get this out of the way. I've never really cared for Chad Ochocinco. Nobody asked me, I'm sure in the grand scheme, he don't give a shit whether I care about him or not. But this is my show. This is my channel. I don't care much for Chad Ochocinco. I've never cared for his attitude towards women or life in general, really. I'm glad that he's had this little turnaround in the past few years. But this is, again, something that we have to talk about. So a fan tweeted Ocho Cinco and asked him basically, how does he stay so positive? And he replied, I'm reading this from the shade room. He replied, I lost my temper for once in life for three seconds and it cost me a lifetime's worth of work. I got it all back plus some after getting a second chance and nothing will ever get me out of that happy space again. Sounds real good, but Evelyn Lozada, his ex-wife and former maybe not former basketball wife, saw that tweet and then went on her own Instagram and talked about how it triggered her because she alleges that Chad actually hit her more than one time outside of the time that we all know about the headbutt incident that led to their divorce, that led to their big public breakup. You know, the really sad part about this, again, it's kind of like with the Meg story. People just... For some reason, the internet does not see black women as being able to be in pain. And it's a very weird thing because when Evelyn got on the internet and talked about how what Chad said triggered her into having, you know, flashbacks and it triggered her into a mode, people were telling her how she should feel because she's talked to Chad, she's had open and honest and happy conversations with Chad since that whole situation. But here's the thing, you can't tell people how to feel about a situation. It's almost like a death in your life. You're gonna be fine and then something could trigger it and then you're just not okay for a little while. Obviously, Evelyn, as she said on her, uh, as she said on her platform, what Chad said triggered her. She could have been fine this whole time, but what he said triggered her. And I could see how it would trigger her because he made it seem as if this one mistake screwed everything up. She alleges it was more than that one time. I don't, again, I don't know that ain't my tea and that's not the tea that I have been served. So I don't know what's what. I don't know if he has hit her more than once. I don't know if it was just that one time. Everything that I'm talking about is alleged, but still, with Evelyn, you do not get to tell people how they should and should not feel about their pain and about their experiences. She was married to that man. She was dating that man. She was in that man's life, and he was in hers. So will we ever know the full truth? Probably not, because they're always going to go back and forth and about what actually happened. As far as I know, he has not said anything into response uh, after she came out and said what she said. But listen, man, the internet has to do a better job at protecting women. I'm gonna say that throughout this whole first episode. The internet has got to do a better job at protecting women. So this next story really hits hard for me. I'm not gonna talk about it too, too much, but um, let's send some prayers up for Tamar Braxton, who was rushed to the hospital for, um, let's send some prayers up for Tamar Braxton, who was rushed to the hospital following, uh, an apparent suicide attempt. I don't, I don't want to get off into details of this story. I really don't. Um, it brings up some bad stuff in my own mind. But um, I will say Tamar Braxton is uh, one of my favorite singers. I love her voice. I love her spirit. Um, and I'm going to be praying for her. I really hope that this is a misunderstanding. If it's not, 
I hope that she gets the help that she needs. Um, I, first, I hope she comes out on the other side of this and bounces back. But second, I hope that she gets whatever help it is that she needs because, huh, yeah, I'm not going to get too off into that. That's just point blank period. I, I hope that... Um, I hope that Tamar is okay. And I hope that she gets the help that she needs. Child, y'all done wore entanglements to the ground so bad that August Alcina feels the need to drop a song. Tonight, I'm recording this Saturday, July 18th, entitled Entanglements. Girl, I... Some Somebody find the off switch. I'm tired. Somebody got to find the off switch. I will admit, though, all the memes and stuff have been absolutely hilarious. I will admit that I've joined in on some of the bull. But, child, y'all, it's, it's all a money grab now at this point. Okay, we can leave entanglements alone. It's all a money grab at this point. I don't want to hear no more. Jada and them done came out and said, well, it was just an entanglement. Will said she had a relationship. She said an entanglement. I don't know which is which. August done come out and said that uh, he, I, I don't know what he gonna say in the song, child, but he done already come out and said, well, he wasn't pressured and nobody did anything to him and all that. Girl, let's just leave Jada, Will, and August alone. If they want to be entangled, let them be entangled. If they want to be entrapped, let them be entrapped. If they want to be in food, let them be in food. Because I feel like a fool for still caring about this. I'm going to listen to entanglements. I'm going to listen. But that's all I got to say about this right here. And finally, we're going to end our Hot Topics segment on some good news. Talking about Beyonce, Queen Mother. Beyonce and her Be Good Foundation teaming up with the NAACP to offer up to $10,000 grants to small black owned businesses in select cities because of the coronavirus. I just needed something good, y'all. All the news this week was so heavy with death and despair and domestic violence and it, there was nothing like I wanted this first episode to be real fun and funny all the hot topics this week were really tragic to me so I just wanted to end on something good go Beyonce go uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People Ooh. can we talk Y'all, can we talk? Can we talk about Evie McKinney and her new single, Bring the Whole Hood? Oh my God. I absolutely love this song. So I actually discovered who Evie McKinney is through uh, the Terrell show here on YouTube. Hey, Terrell. Um, Cause I, I didn't, I don't watch the reality singing shows. I just don't. I know she was on the four. But I know all that through Terrell, and I've loved her ever since. Well, she has a new single out called Bring the Whole Hood, and it is, it's the, it's, it's the song that the culture needs right now. I'm not even playing with y'all. It's the song that the culture needs. It's a great summertime song. It's a feel-good song. Her voice is freaking phenomenal. Oh my God, that girl can sing. I don't want nothing. I just wanted to talk about Bring the Whole Hood and how it's my my anthem for my life now because uh, it's perfect. So, Evie McKinney, if you're out there watching, girl, you did that. And I'm and I'm finna blast Bring the Whole Hood every day because we on the same page, girl. That's my plan too, all right? That's it, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to the first episode of Can We Talk right here on JTTV. If you like what you saw, leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave a thumbs down. Go ahead and comment and tell me your thoughts on this week's hot topics. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more of my content. And make sure y'all go stream Evie McKinney, Bring the Whole Hood. 
Go stream that girl's music. I'm telling you, that song is phenomenal. You'll love it. It's the perfect song. I love y'all. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Jordan Terrell. Follow the pages, Instagram and Twitter at Jordan Terrell TV. That's all I got. See y'all next week. Peace.